Greetings. I'm Laura Rainwater. I'm one of the pastors at Parker United Methodist Church, and it's good to talk to you these last few days before the election. Our sermon series has focused during this election month um, on do unto others, the biblical, man, the biblical command that we are called to do unto others as we would have others do unto us. And it's one of those statements that is so easy to say, but can be very challenging to live. How do we treat people with respect and dignity is what we've been asking. Because as we're reminded, we are all part of God's people. We are all part of God's kingdom and that we are all God's beloved ones. So how do we treat people as if we know that in our conversations and in our interactions with them? How do we follow what Jesus commands, which is to love our enemies, when sometimes that's the last thing we want to do? And how do we handle this political election rhetoric that invites us, encourages us, and even requires us to dislike or even hate those who disagree with us on policies, on um, concerns, on things that are most near and dear to us? How do we strive to love those people? as I believe God calls us to. Our Monday night conversation group in October, we've talked a lot about how this do unto others is a challenge, um, how we can still struggle with our relationships and with following certain, certain social media friendships that it just seems difficult. And what we talked about this past Monday, which is the Monday before the week of the election, we just asked ourselves, what do we need to do over the next week to keep ourselves sane, <laughs> calm, or spiritually centered? It feels like the, the higher and the more antagonistic the rhetoric is, the more deplete we may feel. Or maybe that's just the few of us that have been meeting. We've talked about how we are just weary and we are worn out. And honestly, we're concerned that the election will not be the end of the conflict, that even the determination of who wins the election, especially at the national level, could go on and on and on. And for some of us, we fear what is, what is that anger and that conflict and that uncertainty? What kind of toll is that gonna take on us as individuals, us as a community, us as a nation? So this past Monday, we talked about what do we need to do to take care of ourselves? And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. What do you need in order to stay centered in this topsy-turvy antagonistic climate? What do you need to do to keep your spiritual well filled with the important things that remind you of who you are, remind you of the great creation that God has offered to us to be um, in partnership and taking care of? And what do we need just to not go a little crazy. You know, I think for some of us, this election season, all we can be, all we're filled with anger and we don't know how to handle that anger because it's not what we normally do. We're not what we normally feel. And for others of us, and this includes me, I just feel despondent or depressed or lack of hope, but yet we have a God of hope. Where do we find that hope when we feel like it's hopeless. Where do we find that peace when all we can feel is anger? So I invite you to consider what do you need in order to be the person that God has created you to be, to be filled with the love and the spirit that are available for us, even when there are forces that seem to be taking it from us. How do we handle all of the challenges so that negativity doesn't win the day? So here are some ideas that we came up with that I wanted to share with you and believe me, I'm gonna be challenging myself with doing these things over the next week. So one of the things we talked about was take a walk, get our bodies act active, uh, maybe working out. Uh, we know that um, exercise can release good endorphins to help us feel a little bit better than maybe we did before. Maybe we just need, if, we, if the weather's good, just to get out and see that there is a bigger world out there that there are um, beautiful signs of fall, beautiful signs of the earth going to sleep and remembering that the earth will wake back up. 
um, when it comes time about six months from now. Take a walk, do something physically active. Speak with a trusted friend. Now, not every friend is gonna be the person that's gonna give us the information we need. Sometimes our friend is gonna be just as upset or just as angry or just as concerned as we are. But who is that person in your life that keeps you grounded? Who is the person that can kind of call you on it when you are going too negative or too angry? Who is the person that can offer you that good conversation, maybe even a distracting conversation, so that you're not talking about the challenges, but you're talking about something else? Keep in touch with that person. Find time for conversation. Maybe they can walk with you um, so that you can be centered in the good things of your life. Have a cup of tea. Maybe you don't drink tea, but what is something that, uh, a beverage especially, that can kind of calm you, center you, remind you to take that deep breath in and release that breath? What is it that, maybe it is a beverage, maybe it, it's something else that can just help you to slow down. For people of faith, I think the most obvious thing we can do is pray. Pray for ourselves. Pray for our family. Pray for our circle of friends. Pray for our church. Pray for our community. Pray for our world. You know, sometimes it feels like we pray and we don't always see the answers, but yet I think prayer is that important connection that we have with God when we are in prayer. So just pray. Pray constantly, as the scriptures say. Um, pray knowing that God is listening. Um, maybe God isn't going to respond the way we expect, but know that God is listening. So be in prayer. Take breaks from the media. You know, I have to be honest, I haven't watched much media over the last several months because it just raises my um, heart rate or my anger level or my despondency level. Um, especially on election night, I can remember as a kid with my parents watching the election results come in. Um, I can also remember the last few elections, the anxiety of watching those election results either come in or not come in. So take a break. If that's something that you like to follow, do that, but don't let it, um, don't let it obsess you or, or be an obsession or something that you can't let go of. Take breaks. Drink that cup of tea. Take that walk. Call that friend. Um, read a book, and we're going to talk about that next, but um, take a break from all media, whether it's watching television, watching your laptop, watching your phone, watching your tablet. Um, just take a break and know that there is something else beyond that screen that you're looking at. Concentrate on yourself. I think that's the thing I've really had to embrace over the last several months, honestly, maybe several years, is that when I feel out of control, when I feel the world is out of control, I realize I can control me. So what do I need to do to take care of myself? What do you need to do to take care of yourself, those spiritual practices, those, you're gonna hear this over and over again from me this morning or this afternoon or this evening whenever you're listening, um, but finding those things that will kind of nurture your soul, nurture your spirit, or just nurture your good health, take care of yourself. Read a book. Um, I've joked with people that over the last several months, I found myself getting into murder mysteries and they're a little more um, explicit in terms of blood, guts, and gore than I would expect that I would like. But there's something cathartic, I guess, about reading some of those books. Um, maybe you're not big into reading books, but maybe listening to podcasts, um, listening to stories, but get yourself out of the media frenzy and, and concentrate, feed your soul in a different way, whether it's with fiction or nonfiction. Like I said, it can be print media, it can be electronic media, um, it can be audio media, but find something that might just distract you from some of the worries that are running through your head. Listen to music. What music centers you? What music puts that smile on your face? Maybe you need to listen to sad music. Um, I have to admit, I've been listening to Halloween music. I'm not a Halloween person. I don't believe in ghosts and ghouls and goblins, but there's something about listening to that music that kind of gets me out of my normal um, thinking process. So listen to music, whatever works for you. I know for me, it's classical music. 
Um, so I've been listening to classical Halloween music, but that's a different story. One thing that we really focused on on Monday night was do something. Don't just sit, don't just watch, don't just listen, but actually get active. Uh, we talked about how sometimes when we're stressed and worried, we clean the house or we organize or we bake or we like to volunteer. Um, that's gonna be something that we're probably gonna talk about over the next several weeks, which is how can you do something that might benefit another person? Because we know that serving and giving and offering ourselves, like we're gonna do at the end of this week with Feed My Starving Children, um, that can get us out of our own worries and instead remind us that there are people that are in need and we have gifts that we can share. Talk to someone, not just a friend, but who is the wise person? The one who when you talk with them, they just seem to spout pearls of wisdom that, that keep you centered, um, that challenge you maybe in your thinking. So we had conversations around the table. Who were the wise ones, not only in our lives, but in our church? The people that when we talk to them, we just feel better or they're able to help frame a situation or a conflict or even our own feelings in such a way that we just feel like they are sharing something that is beyond what we could imagine. Choose and seek out those who you consider wise that can give you good wor words of wisdom. Uh, and do things that allow God to help you breathe. Do those spiritual practices that help you center. Maybe it's reading scripture. Maybe it's reading devotion after devotion after devotion, looking for something that will speak to you in that moment. Um, maybe it's reading other people's prayers. Maybe it's spending time in contemplative prayer, which is silencing our minds and focusing on the life, the life-giving spirit that is around us. Each of us have different practices or habits or, or tools to help us get through the challenging times. Find those that work for you and practice them. They can all help us to keep that spirit, spiritual well filled so that when we start to feel a little empty, we do something that will fill it right back up. Um, and I invite us to find those friends in the community that can remind us to do those things that take care of ourselves. What else might you do? What else comes to your mind when you think about ways that you can care for yourself, care for others, care for God's world that is right around us? I know there are times, and there will be times over the next several days when it will feel heavy and worrisome. Maybe we need to take a break from social media. I didn't mention that, um, but that's definitely something that many of us are doing or have done. But remember that we have control over ourselves and we can control what we put inside of our minds and our spirits. So Paul wrote to the church in Philippi this, this word, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul didn't say offer it to God and God will magically fix it, but it will center our hearts and our minds and ourselves. So I wanna close with this prayer from Bishop Kenneth Carter. In 2008, he was the pastor at Providence United Methodist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, I invite this to be our prayer for the next several days creator of us all. You are the source of every blessing, the judge of every nation, and the hope of earth and heaven. We pray to you on the eve of this important and historic election. We call to mind the best that is within us, that we live under God, that we are indivisible, that liberty and justice extend to all. We acknowledge the sin that runs through our history as a nation, the displacement of native peoples, racial injustice, economic inequality, and regional, separation, and regional separation. And we profess a deep and abiding gratitude for the goodness of ordinary people who have made sacrifices, who have sought opportunities, who have journeyed to this land as immigrants, 
and strengthened its promise in successive generations who have found freedom on these shores and defended this freedom at tremendous cost. Be with us in the days that are near. Remind us that your ways are not our ways, that your power and might transcend the plans of every nation, that you are not mocked. Let those who follow your son, Jesus Christ, be a peaceable people in the midst of division and send your spirit of peace, justice, and freedom upon us. Break down the walls of political partisanship and make us one. Give us freedom to walk in your ways, courage to speak in your name, and humility to trust you in your providence. Amen. Go in peace, friends.